remember how many. Lucy Carter and I were such close friends in school. Do you think I've changed since then? <laughs> how would I know, Mom? I didn't know you then. <laughs> I wonder if she's changed. I wonder if... Uh... Oh, there she is. look like that. I don't know, but I hope I look as good as you and Mom when I... All that? <laughs> Quit while we're ahead, huh? <laughs> oh, Lucy, it's so good to see you again. I can't tell you how thrilled I was when you called and said you were coming to town. Well, I can't tell you how thrilled I was when you said that I could stay here with you. You see, that way, we don't have to interrupt our gossiping by running back and forth from the hotel. <laughs> uh, are you sure it's all right with your husband? Oh, of course. As it happens, he's out of town. But I'm sure he would have been all for it. You mean I'm not even going to get to meet the lucky man? <laughs> I'm afraid not. He's doing a two-week engagement in Boston. Tell me, Kathy, what's he like? He's charming. He yells a lot. <laughs> and he's quite good-looking. And he yells a lot. <laughs> and he's the sweetest man you ever met. If you like a man who yells a lot. <laughs> Between us, we've given you a pretty good description of Dan. And... Oh, I'd recognize him anywhere. He's he's a handsome, charming fellow with a big mouth. Do <laughs> you ever see Sylvia Newton or um, uh, Helen Rivkin or Janet, uh, 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 the, the the one with the uh, the funny nose? Janet, what's her name? Oh, Robinson. Janet Robinson. Do you ever see those girls? Uh oh, gossip time. I'm going to go upstairs and wash my hair. It's really nice to have you here, Mrs. Carter. Thank you, darling. You know, it's funny that you should mention Sylvia Newton. What? I ran into her a couple of weeks ago. Yeah? Oh, you wouldn't recognize her. Now, she really has changed. Really? Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> and you should see Helen Rifkin. What about her? Well, she dyes her hair. <laughs> she dyes? You're putting me on. <laughs> oh, heaven's sake. I'm so glad. I've never had to do anything to mine. <laughs> Say, Kathy, whatever happened to Mabel Cock and Locker? <laughs> but she's still trying to take off a couple of pounds. She ought to take a couple of pounds off that name. <laughs> you know, I just love this bedroom. It's done in such good taste. It's so, it's so feminine. Well, Danny wouldn't have it any other way. Come on, let me show you what he got me for our last anniversary. Oh, I'd love to see it. Oh, Kathy, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, good heavens. Just what you needed, another negligee. There must be 80 of them here. <laughs> what is he, Bluebeard or something? <laughs> Danny gives me negligees for all occasions, with a card reading, for Danny, from Danny. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? He says he really likes a girl to look like a girl. Uh -huh. If there's anything he can't stand, it's an unfeminine woman. Come on. Kathy, you are amazing. Oh, huh? why do you say that? Well, here you are with a husband who likes feminine females, and he's in show business where he's surrounded by beautiful, young, feminine females. And you calmly let him go out of town without you. Well, I trust Danny. <laughs> well, that's what's so amazing. <laughs> you know, my late husband wasn't what you'd call a swinger. But if he had been in show business like your Danny, he wouldn't have been able to make a move without bumping into me or one of my detectives. <laughs> I don't think Danny has ever looked at another woman since we've been married. You are kidding. No, I, I mean as a woman. Well, what did you do? Outfit him with a blindfold and a seeing-eye dog? <laughs> we're, just as, we're just as crazy about each other as we were when we first met. 
I wouldn't risk spoiling that. Grandma, Grandma! Whoa, Grandma, what's that? Oh, well, it's um, my grandson, Michael. What's the matter with it? Well, he's been having nightmares lately. Oh. I'll look in on him. Besides, I'd better let you get to bed. You must be beat after your trip. Well, a little. Just point me in the direction of the guest room. <laughs> Why don't you stay in here? You'll be much more comfortable. Oh, no. I couldn't think of doing that. I don't want to take your room. No, really. I'll probably have to spend the night with Michael anyway. Are you sure? Yes, and... Well, to be honest with you, we're having a little trouble with the plumbing in the guest room. Oh, <laughs> well, in that case, okay. And thank you, dear. Uh, see you in the morning. In the morning? Yeah. Um, Kathy, I'll make a deal with you. What's that? In the morning, you don't look at me too hard, and I won't look at you. <laughs> You've got a deal. Okay, thank you, dear. Good night. Good night. No wonder she trusts him. <laughs> You know, you've always been one of my favorite comedians. Oh, well, that's a good summer, really. <laughs> I just love when, when you fold your arms and you say, Well, <laughs> they fall out of the floor. <laughs> That'll cost you the extra. See, I'm the fellow who does this. And away we go. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, there you are. I was only kidding. I was too, Mr. Burrow. <laughs> Anything like like that, honey? It was just, I mean, one little nip on the neck. Why aren't you in Boston? Well, there was a strike at the club, and I hurried home. I thought I'd surprise you, and and well, how was I supposed to know that wasn't you in that bed? Ha! <laughs> Lucy, I'm talking about Linda. Oh, she's still in her room. 
Let's say hello to things in Boston or something instead of just gimme, gimme, gimme. But you said that you'd consider raising my allowance as soon as you got back from Boston. I know, honey, I, but, but believe me, dear, this is, this, this is not the best morning in the world for me to discuss money with anybody. <laughs> well, there goes a golden opportunity. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I expected you to be so glad to see me, you'd be a pushover. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, but I got work to do. Got to write a whole arrangement by 3 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah. 
paper is hung up on your sweater. Take your hands away. Let me get up. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to get up, too. Goodness sake. Oh, hey, like this. Oh. Let go. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Wait, wait, I, 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 I got an idea. I got an idea. Uh, well, I'll, I'll just take off my sweater. You will take off nothing. <laughs> okay, okay. Then you, you, you take off your... I'll do nothing of the sort. <laughs> You're not just going to stand here like this all day, if you don't mind. Let me see if I just give it a little chug here. Take him. Oh! Area code eight seven four. Uh, the number is five 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 eight nine six two. Yes, I, I, I'd like to speak to Mary Jane Lewis. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mary Jane. This is Lucy. Mary Jane, can you pick me up at the airport this evening? I know I was supposed to be here two more days, but I've run into a little problem. Yeah, a problem named Danny Williams. That's right. My friend Kathy's husband. He's crazy about me. Well, no, he didn't exactly tell me that, but actions speak louder than words. And brother, have I seen action these past few days. Yeah, well, the thing that bothers me is the fact that he, he may never get over me. Well, if I could just think of some way to uninfatuate him and, and save poor Kathy's marriage. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't know anything about it yet. Although she should have had some suspicions because she was, she was telling me how he liked very feminine women. And, you know, I, I, I've had that trouble all my life. <laughs> hey, Mary Jane. Mary Jane, I think I know how to uninfatuate him. Look, don't bother to pick me up at the airport. I'll call you again. Bye-bye. I borrowed some of your things, more my style for hanging around the house. <laughs> not at all, not at all. How's the boy? Fine, fine. Uh, hey, that stogie smells good. Got another one? Uh, yeah. Girl, good, good, good. Ah, hell, oh boy. Great. <laughs> hey, sit down. I got a great story to tell you. <laughs> Did you ever hear the one about the two guys in the steam room? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I know that. Yeah, the real scorcher, ain't it? <laughs> hey, listen. Did you catch the Henderson Kid McCoy fight? No, 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 I didn't. Oh, it was a beaut. Oh. Yeah, especially in the third round. The kid came out swinging <laughs> and really letting them have it. Oh, boy. He was in... Ah! Oh, Kathy. 
Kathy, darling, I'm terribly sorry about all this. Uh, it, it was all so perfectly innocent. Uh, just one of those things. Nothing for you to worry about. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Lucy. Watch him like a hawk. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Now listen, Clancy. I mean, you do believe me, don't you? I mean, it was all just perfectly innocent. It was pure accident. I mean, the, the bed, the shower, and what you thought was smooching and everything was nothing. You, know, you do believe me, don't you, dear? I believe you. That quickly? Why not? Well, I like that. What am I, Jojo the dog face boy? It's possible, you know. I mean, she's a very attractive feminine woman, and and I may be a grandfather, but I'm not embalmed yet. Daddy, but if I ever catch you in the shower with a woman again, yes? it had better be me. <laughs> With every sigh, I become more mad about you. So lost without you. And so it goes. Can you imagine how much I'd love you? Goodbye. I know the only one for me could only be my arms won't free you. My heart won't try.